Today, I'm going to be taking a look at three different keyboards at three different price points, and we're going to be answering the question, which keyboard is the most worth it? So a few years ago during the pandemic, custom keyboards absolutely blew up. And a big reason as to why is because nobody knew what the hell was happening. And at the time, custom keyboards were also cool because it was so exclusive. It was hard to get your hands on switches, keycaps, keyboards. And it was also because information about custom keyboards were so scarce. So fast forward a few years and all the things that used to be exclusive are now readily available. And some of these keyboards are only $100 to $150 and they sound and feel just as good as a keyboard that costs around $500. US dollars. Let's get started. That's right, we also need to look for a cheap keyboard. I have no idea where to find one. Okay, there's a lot of cheap stuff, but not cheap key- oh, oh my god, this might be it. Yeah, that's like $8. All right guys, I think I found it. I think I found the perfect weird keyboard to review. It's super cheap, has some weird features that is promising. I can't wait to take a look at this at home. No, you're kidding me. They said there's a one week warranty with this keyboard. <laughs> No way, it's surviving more than a day. So this is the cheapest keyboard I could find and it's around like nine US dollars. It's called the Melang Steel Behemoth T806. It has a high keycap design for short key travel, fast feedback speed and no key stuck. And if you're not sold already, they even have a row called Keyboard Selling Points. It's apparently four star waterproof, which I'm very excited to test. And for some reason, some of the labels are in Spanish, I believe. So I don't know what that's about. It smells extremely plasticky. Actually, this is not bad. So first impressions, yeah, this is what I expect for $9, but I thought it'd be a little bit better. Maybe I didn't look in the right place, but it does come with a mouse that sometimes doesn't work when I press the right click button. Oh God. So the keyboard has a handle at the top for some reason. The keycaps are, yeah, pretty bad. They're not really well made. There's a lot of imperfections on the corners. Physically, the keyboard is really light. It says that it has steel plate production, but I'm assuming it's just this back piece. The keycaps also feel really cheap and the sound is nothing great. Okay, so I broke the keycap trying to put it back on. So the keyboard does work. You can type, but again, it doesn't sound great at all. And it also feels really mushy, but it is a membrane keyboard, so I didn't really expect that much. But again, this keyboard very strongly advertised its waterproof abilities, so we're gonna have to try that out. All right, so let's start off with test number one. Just a little bit of water. Let's put a bit of water, just pour it around. Okay, so the keyboard is pretty wet. There is a decent amount of water on it, and yeah. So it works fine. All right, but I'm not satisfied with that. Let's pour a little bit more, just see how it goes. Let's really just get as much water as we can on here. Oh God, the water's falling out, okay. Still looks perfectly fine. If it really is four star waterproof, then it should be able to survive being completely submerged in a bucket of water for half an hour. <sighs> All right. Ugh. And in we go. That is almost perfectly, there we go. Just put it all the way in. All right, so let's do our first test. <laughs> it still works. That is crazy. What? How is it? Okay, I'm impressed. But let's see if it can really last the whole 30 minutes. Okay, so while that second keyboard is marinating, let's take a look at the second keyboard, the Rainy 75. Oh no, my Bluetooth speaker ran out of battery. Has this ever happened to you? Yeah, it has. Good. What? Don't end up like that guy. He's ugly and dumb. Yes. Thankfully, Wait, today's sponsor yes. is Xiaomi and CupTech, and they just released a new line of power banks. The power banks come in three different sizes. We have 20,000, 25,000, and 40,000. The 20,000 model is perfect for everyday use because it's small, just like me. And even though it's small, it comes with two USB-C ports and one USB-A port, which makes it perfect for charging multiple devices at once. The 25,000 model is my personal favorite because it comes with a huge screen. For a long time, I've been using power banks that only tell me roughly how much battery it has left, and that's really frustrating. But with the Xiaomi CupTech power bank, I will know exactly how much battery it has left. On full battery, this power bank was able to charge my iPhone 14 Pro three times completely. 
It's actually really impressive. The 40,000 model is a big, chonky boy. It comes with four USB ports, an even larger screen, and even a wireless charger, and a handle if you're gonna be bringing this around. I always use this power bank if I'm out for a long period of time or if I need to charge a lot of things at once. And one feature that I really like is that if you double tap the power button, it actually turns on a low current mode. And this feature is perfect for low current devices like Bluetooth headsets or smartwatches. I've been using these power banks pretty much every day and they're honestly great, so please do check them out. A massive thank you to Cocktech for sponsoring today's video. So this keyboard costs $100 and a lot of people have been saying very good things about it, so I had to check it out. Full transparency, Wob Key has sent me this keyboard for free, but that won't change my review about it. I really like the packaging. It looks really clean, it's cute and very simple, has some glossy varnish at the back. Let's take a look. All right, so when we first open the keyboard, we're greeted with an instruction card in Chinese. We also have an accessory box. And in here, we have a really nice USB-C cable. It's not braided, but it looks pretty cool. A two-in-one keycap and switch puller, which looks pretty decent. And a wireless transmitter USB, I'm assuming. All right, so first impressions, it comes really nicely packaged. And I mean, the construction's great. Like the machining is amazing. I love how the logo is CNC machined into here. <laughs> oh my God, what? This is a hundred bucks? <laughs> Sounds. And this is fact. This is straight from the factory, I'm guessing. This has not been modified. There's no rattle on the stabilizers. And it sounds so clean and poppy. Crazy. And it looks amazing. They haven't compromised on anything, really. It just looks so good. All right, please tell me it's hot swap. If this is not hot swap, that would ruin everything. Oh my God, it's hot swap. Wow, and I forgot to talk about the keycaps. Yeah, the keycaps look absolutely amazing. They feel great as well. The printing is super consistent, just looks really nice. So under the caps lock button, there is an on and off button. So I'm just gonna flick it up to on. And yes, okay, it is on. So I'm assuming, yeah, and it works, wow. So one comment I will make about this keyboard that I kind of don't like is that the on and off button is hidden under the caps lock keycap. So it means that I have to have a switch puller on me or at least you know, pry the keycap open in order to turn the keyboard off and on. And that's not the worst thing, but it is a little bit inconvenient. If I didn't know anything about this keyboard and you told me that it was like 500 bucks, I would genuinely believe you. I would have no questions asked. It just sounds and feels that good. All right, before I move on to the final keyboard, let's check in on our budget keyboard. So I actually had to go for volleyball training earlier and that took around three to four hours. So this keyboard has actually been chilling in the water for a couple hours now. <laughs> <laughs> dripping here cool all right the keyboard is plugged in we got monkey type running and now for the moment of truth it works that is <laughs> actually ridiculous but yeah this cheap keyboard absolute 10 out of 10 if for some reason you live underwater and you want to use a keyboard that's what you should be getting and now for the final keyboard, we have the Bitmap Iskar from Bitmap Studios. And this keyboard starts at 449 US dollars. So they have generously sent over two PCBs and they've also sent over a cute little package. And that contains some gasket strips as well as a lot of foam for the keyboard. All right. Let's build this keyboard. The bitmap Iskar comes with a hot swap PCB and you may have noticed that the PCB has lines going through the middle. These are flex cuts and they are designed to make the keyboard more flexible when you type on it. We're going to be using our trusty TXAP stabilizers from MKB.MY, massive thank you to them. And we're going to start by balancing the wires, then lubing them with some 205G0 and dielectric grease. And then we're gonna put the stabilizers back together. Ideally, we wouldn't even need to loop stabilizers at all. They should come out perfect out of the box. And we are getting really close to that reality. But for now, lubing stabilizers is still probably the best way. For this build, I'm gonna be using a polycarbonate plate for a bouncy typing experience and a poppy sound signature. I also use the thin layer of PCB foam. I'm not a fan of the thicker foam as it really dampens the sound of the keyboard. For the switches, I got some lubed and filmed Alpaca linear switches. The Iskar 65 uses a gasket mount, so the first thing we need to do is attach the gaskets onto the sides of the plate. The board comes with an option between thin and thick gaskets, but I decided to go for a thicker option for a bit more cushioning. And to fully assemble the board, we have to insert the top rim onto the board. I received three different colors, silver, gold, and black. I decided to go with the black rim to stick with a nice all black theme. So once that's secured, we can screw the mirror back piece onto the back of the board, add the rubber feet, and the build is now almost complete. All we need now are some keycaps, and I think the best fit for this is the GMK Modern Dolch. And here it is, the completed Iskar 65 build. And it is absolutely beautiful. 
So why on earth would anyone spend that much money on a custom keyboard? And I think the first thing is that it provides a lot of customizability. You can change everything from the plate to the PCB to the back weight to the rim in the front. Paying a premium on a keyboard like this allows you to really customize it from the bottom up. So comparing the Rainy 75 and the Iskar 65 side by side, in terms of sound and feel, the main difference is that the Rainy 75 has a bit of a louder sound signature, while the Iskar 65 is just a bit more muted. In terms of overall build quality and appearance, I definitely prefer the Iskar 65 over the Rainy 75. But the Iskar 65 also comes with a Bluetooth feature, which is really nice. But the main difference is of course the price tag. The Iskar 65 is $450, while this is only $100. And to top it all off, the Rainy 75 comes completely pre-built so you don't have to make any modifications and it already sounds really good. So the keyboard I would recommend getting would be this guy. No, I'm joking. <laughs> Get out of here. I definitely recommend getting the Rainy 75 if you're just getting into the hobby or if you just want a nice custom keyboard for a really good price. The Iskar 65 is also amazing and I definitely recommend it, but only to those who have a bigger budget and want to try build a keyboard for themselves. But if you're still dipping your toes into the hobby, which is probably most of you, I think this keyboard is probably the best choice for you. If you enjoyed, please like the video, check out my Instagram at homogeneo. See ya.